Here we want to talk about indeterminate axially loaded elements that are also subjected to temperature change. We want to understand how temperature change would cause internal forces in the indeterminate axially loaded elements. But before talking about that, let's look into some real-world examples. This picture shows the expansion gaps on a bridge. Probably some of you have seen those gaps on the bridge. But what is the reason for using those gaps on the bridge? The bridge deck might be subjected to deformation for different reasons. For instance, a temperature change may cause deformation on a bridge. If the bridge is expanding and there is no room for expansion, it would cause some internal forces in the deck that may cause the bridge to break. To avoid that, engineers use expansion joints to allow for the free movement of the deck and avoid development of the internal forces that may cause damage in the bridge. Now, let's look into this problem. An aluminum tube with a cross-sectional area of A sub S equal to 600 squared millimeter is used as sleeve for a steel bolt having a cross-sectional area of A sub B of 400 squared millimeter. When the temperature is 15 degrees, the nut holds the assembly in snug position such that the axial force in the bolt is negligible. If the temperature increases to 80 degrees, determine the force in the bolt and sleeve. Let's look into the concept of thermal expansion. I have prepared one animation for you to look into this problem conceptually and then do the numerical calculations. Consider two cases. On the left side, there is a bolt and a sleeve. They are connected on top, but they are free at the bottom part. I want to see what's going on if we increase the temperature. By increasing the temperature, they are going to expand. Because they are made from two different materials, they are going to expand with a different amount, right? One of them is going to expand more than the other one. Which one is going to expand more? The one that has higher coefficient of thermal expansion, alpha. So in this case, if it has higher values, it's going to expand more. In this case, is there any internal force in the system? No. It is just expanding. There is no internal force, there is no internal stress because of the temperature. However, if we restrain the free end by a knot at the other end, there will be something happening here. Let's look at the right case and see what's going on. To make it easier to understand, Let's remove that knot at the end and allow it to deform freely. But we know that because of that knot at the other end, they are going to deform with the same amount. They are restrained to have the same deformation, right? So how can I apply that condition? How can I make sure that they are going to deform with the same amount? In this case, there should be some internal force in the bolt that make it larger that pull it down, and there should be some internal force on sleeve that compresses that, make it shorter. In that case, there would be one point that these two are going to have the same deformation, which we call them compatibility of deformation. Now let's look into this again from deformation point of view. I'm going to zoom into the left element. In this case, the bolt is going to expand because of the temperature. I'm going to call this delta sub bt. B stands for bolt, T stands for temperature. Similar to that, sleeve is going to expand because of the temperature. I'm going to call that delta st. And as we see here, they are not equal to each other. But on the right bolt, they are having the same deformation. First of all, where would be that equilibrium deformation? It has to be between these two values, right? Between delta BT and delta ST. But sometimes, if you want to quickly find the answer in the multiple choice, you can determine delta BT and delta ST. The answer that is between these two values is the only possible option, right? So that would be just one trick if you want to come up with the right answer faster. Anyway, so that orange line shows the compatibility of the formation line. Now let's get back to the element that is restrained. In that case, we see that sleeve is getting shorter by this amount. Delta SE is the deformation in sleeve caused by force, and delta BE is deformation in the bolt caused by the force. So now I need to write down the compatibility of deformation. In this case, we see that one of them is going to be negative, one of them is going to be positive, right? But there is one thing that makes the world easier for us. 
Look at this case. If we want to write down the forces, we know that one of them is compressive, one of them is tensile. But we have this convention. If you put all the forces always outward from the cut surface, it would automatically give you the right sign for the force. And the other beauty of this convention is that it would automatically get the right sign for the compatibility of deformation. So you don't need to be worried about sign. You would simply add everything together and everything would have the correct sign throughout the calculation. Okay, let's start with the free body diagram. To follow that convention, I'm going to assume that the force is outward from the surface. So Fs is opposite. By the way, I showed the two arrows here. I just wanted to show that force is acting everywhere on that sleeve. It doesn't mean that we have two forces. It just represents the total force on sleeve. So in that case, if I put that outward from the cut surface, some of the forces in the y direction should be equal to zero. And that means that Fs plus Fb is equal to zero. As you can see, there are two unknowns in this problem and just one equation. So the problem is indeterminate. I'm going to call this equation number one. In the second step, I'm going to go and determine how much would be the deformation in sleeve and the bolt. Let's start with the bolt. Delta B is delta BE plus delta BT. Elastic deformation and thermal deformation. The elastic deformation is a force multiplied by length divided by E and A. For bolt, I'm going to use subscript of B for F, E, and A. Length, we don't need to do that because length of bolt and sleeve are going to be equal to each other. I'm just going to use L for that. Thermal deformation would be alpha, delta T, L. And again, alpha depends on the material, so I'm going to use alpha sub B. Delta T or temperature change is the same. Length is the same. So I'm going to leave them alone without any subscript. All right, let's determine the deformation in sleeve, and that would be deformation in sleeve caused by elastic force and deformation in sleeve caused by temperature, or delta SE plus delta ST. Similar to the previous case, we have FS, L divided by ES, AS, plus alpha S, delta T, L. All right? So we have determined the deformation in these two problems. Note that the only unknown that we have is F or force in these. All right, now I'm going to go to the third step, which is the compatibility of deformation. This is the main part for solving these types of problems. We can see that, that the total deformation in the bolt and sleeve should be equal to each other because they are restrained. So I'm going to apply this condition. Delta S is equal to delta B. Now we can plug the values of delta S and B into this equation, all right? This is the compatibility of deformation. So I'm going to cancel out L here, and we don't need to have that value, actually. So that would give us the second equation that I'm going to call that equation number two. Now there are two equations and two unknowns that could be used for solving for forces in the elements. Now go ahead and solve this problem numerically using the numbers that we have in this problem. 